It is now time for your main event. Welcome to the World Arm Wrestling League. We've got excitement. What a match. It will be Thunder and Lightning. This is epic. This is history. Sports Bar of the World Arm Wrestling League. Buffalo Wild Wings will also be the exclusive host of the WAL Qualifier Series. Look for details on that soon. Main event tonight, it'll be a good one. Matt Mask and Todd Hutchings. Hutchings went in 501. And in our lightweight title match, Sam Harris defending his title against the man he defeated last year, Jeff Hale. The two headliners here in Baltimore. Alongside Max Tobin, my name is Ben Holden. Jason Zone Fisher with us as well. Thrilled to be with you here on BR Live. And what a night, Max, we're in store for. I'm so excited. The main event, obviously, Matt Mass, Todd Hutchings is set to be an epic match. But I'm looking forward to seeing the lightweight hammer matchup of this beauty right here. Yes. Sam Harris, Jeff Hale for the championship and the hammer. But look at this match card. Paul Lynn, Paul Talbot. Great middleweight matchup. Angie Rose, Michelle Dugan, great middleweight matchup again. And then we got the super heavyweight big boys, Jerry Cataret, Ryan Espy. Tell them about that, the rest of them. Ryan Espy is pushing 400 pounds, and then you got Hale and Harris, and then we close things out in our fifth match of the night with Hutchings and Matt Mask. Let's now, for those of you that are new to the WAL and arm wrestling, let's get you now first and up to speed on the rules of the game. The referee begins the match by centering the competitor's hands on the table. The hands must be level, close, and tightly set. If their grip slips, they will be placed in the strap. During the match, the arm wrestlers must keep their elbow on the pad at all times. To win the match, a competitor must touch his opponent's hand or wrist to the pad or break the plane of the pin line. Three fouls is a loss. So the rules of the game, and the crowd is filed in here nicely. And the tail of the tape, Max Tommen, in our first match, it's Paul against Paul. Paul Lynn, a bit of a newcomer to the WAL, just 11 and 3 is record. Paul Talbot, a past champion. What do you see in this one? Well, it's like you alluded to. It's the newcomer versus the veteran. Paul Talbot established years of dominance. Lightweight champion, hammer holder, moved up to the middleweight class. Still a contender for the hammer in this class. But Paul Lynn is a hungry and very capable opponent. So this is a very even matchup in my eyes. Very good. So that'll get us going here. Paul Lynn and Paul Talbot. And earlier today, we had a chance to catch up with Paul Lynn and get his thoughts on this match against the assassin, Paul Talbot. Well, I learned he has a couple angles that I have to really be prepared for, and I learned that, that it's gonna be important for me to have peaked for this match. So I think I had a comprehensive training regime with, with double days and actually tapering off. So I definitely feel like my diet and my, my preparation for this match is, is much more concise. Well, I mean, obviously there's some unknowns. He's an established champion, you know, 14, 15 years in the sport and I've only got three. So those are things that definitely weigh on my mind. Uh, as far as physical strength and my ability, I feel very confident. I feel very confident in my preparation. It's really gonna come down to, can I execute on the table? All right, so the high school football coach is making his debut here in the Supermatch Showdown Series. And Tell us about Paul Talbot and in detail, what, what's the book on him? Well, Talbot is just, you know, the type of arm wrestler that was born to do this. He started out um, just already being good, straight to the pros and dominated early in his career and established himself as one of the best in the world. And he's been holding that title ever since and he's a very dangerous opponent. 
He really is. He's a multiple time champion in the WAL in 2014, 15, and in 17, first place finishes in the WAL. Take a look now at our fan poll brought to us courtesy of Instagram. Does that surprise you based on what we've just discussed? It does because Paul Lynn is coming off a lot of big wins and has a lot in his favor as far as momentum. But make no mistake, Paul Talbot is an established veteran and champion with a huge pedigree. Do not underestimate him. Well, here's how you can follow us on social media. Of course, WALunderground.com. You can follow us on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. Did we miss anything? We got them all right. We're everywhere. You can watch the previous matches and future ones to come. All right, so without further ado, let's get to our pit announcer here tonight, Ian Riccoboni. Our opening contest is a middleweight clash scheduled for best out of five pulls. Introducing first, standing at six feet tall, this former NFL Italy star middle linebacker now coaches high school football. He started arm wrestling at age 35 years old, but has quickly amassed an 11 and three WAL record. He's one of the fastest rising stars in arm wrestling, weighing in tonight at 203 pounds from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Paul And introducing his opponent, he is a six foot two train conductor who has captured three WAL left handed hammers. Success has followed him from the lightweight to middleweight divisions, and he looks to keep himself in the hammer hunt here tonight. Weighing in at 199 pounds from Highland Town, Ohio, he is Paul the Assassin Talbot. So the two combatants, they enter the pit. Paul Lynn told us this morning, you asked him, he said, do you have a nickname? He said, no. He said, when I was playing football, it was the assassin. That one's taken. Great to visit with both men this morning. As you see, Talbot, he's got Matt Mask and Todd Hutchings there in his corner. A lot of assistance there to help him out. Yeah, Talbot's mild-mannered, reserved, but when it comes to that table, He's aggressive and he's going to look to put on a show and win, but Paul Lynn is coming in confident and really this is a coin flip in my mind, Ben. I don't know who's going to win this match. I really don't. All right, so there's the cash that comes out courtesy of one of our money girls here tonight in Baltimore. And you've done that. You've had the money on the table. What's it like, man, when you get up there and that cash is on the table? When the pretty girl throws the money down, you got to turn up. You got to <laughs> gotta really bring it in that case. And look at that yeah. intensity from Paul Lee. Yes. He is ready for this moment. And there's our head referee, the great Bart Wood, who will oversee the matches here. Five of them here in the Super up. Match Showdown series here want, in Baltimore. If you at the opponents, I want a flat palm to palm, no carving. Gotta go, gotta go Talbot's way. Bart Talbot's Wood way. looking a Talbot's fair way. setup. We're, yep. We're still on the side of the table. That's the five. Way, towards you, bro. Back shoulder up. Dave, you gotta back up. Yeah. Each guy's looking to put it Close where they want the match to go. Right there, That's straight square. wrist. That shoulder ain't straight in too deep. Let's go, Lynn. You gotta come to Talbot's side. Look his shoulder, look how tight his shoulder. Talbot's side. Let's go, let's start it. Close your hands. Whoa. Strap. And they go to the strap. Oh. You have 30 seconds to get the grip. Uh, so Bartwood will apply uh, the strap. Does this favor either one in your mind? I almost always say it favors one guy or the other, but this is a rare matchup where I'm going to say it's very even in the straps. They both have different strengths and weaknesses, and I think it's going to be more of a long game here, an endurance-type game because each of them has different levels and angles and, and ways that they can use the strap. So they apply the strap and... Well, Lynn told us this morning, he said he took seven days off, no heavy work at the gym. Which is rare for him, because he told me he usually yeah. trains till a day or two before a tournament. I'm like, are you crazy? <laughs> that's, a, that's an arm wrestling no-no. You got to take a week off. Okay, gotta go Talbot's way. So he did that. The strap is applied. 
Yeah, and Clintwood will get him set, and we'll get going here in our first of five matches here tonight right from Ramshead Live. Tablet, what a great four. setup here, One but can One Paul Lynn overpower him? Oh, okay. Foul called on Lynn. Settle in. I can't fight you like that. Closing his thumb, so close your thumb. Stay right here. Close your hands. Go. Let's go. Oh, it's even. Paul's taking his hand. He does! Yeah. And he gets the pin! Wow, that's huge for him. That's huge for him. He said, he told me, the first match is pivotal. Yes, he did tell us that. He said he's got to use that massive amount of strength that he has, and he did there. And he also mentioned keeping his shoulder low, too. Yeah, I mean, he got what exactly what he wanted on top of on top of Talbot's arm and hand. And, you know, from there, he can really put his horsepower down, and he drove through the fingers straight to the pin pad there. Huge win for Paul Lynn. And he's fired up. So now 90 seconds between poles. Each competitor goes to their respective corners. We got Dave Morocco, Kenny yeah. Hughes, and Paul's corner, you know, two established pullers. Let's take a look at the other side on Talbot's corner, Matt Mask. Pretty established. Yeah, very established. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling later tonight. Yes, in the main event. Yeah. Ian Carnegie, and I even, I even see Todd there. Hutchings in the background. Yeah, showed him in that earlier shot we had. And, you know, you mentioned Hutchings, and going back to Lynn, Todd Hutchings started when he was 35 years old. Paul Lynn did the exact same thing. And both had such a rapid rise to the top level. Within two, three, four years, they're, they were pulling basically the best in the world and have a very similar trajectory. So if Paul Lynn follows what Hutchings did, in a year or two, he's, he's really going to be a serious threat for anyone. So Lynn comes out of his corner. Talbot back out, Paul Lynn with a 1-0 lead, a best of five here, our first of five matches tonight. And Talbot's a veteran. Yes. Make no mistake, he will make an adjustment here, I guarantee it. He's been in the spotlight before, he's been in huge matches. He knows Close what to thumbs. do here. Well, no. We are in. I got you <laughs> We started there. Right there. Close your thumbs. No side pressure. Get this straight right back here. Close your hands. Go! He did. Runs over him like a freight train. Yes. Lynn is looking impressive to me, Ben. Yes. Wow. Back to the strap, and we'll take a look back here, Max, at the slip. I mean, just brute horsepower over the top. Rolled his wrist, took hand control. Talbot was in trouble there. And he bailed. Smart. So you heard in the introductions, Paul Lynn, his background, he was a Okay, outstanding football player, yeah, played high uh, school, uh, college, uh, played uh, in you gotta come down, relax. Italy come down for a while, a couple of years. You should have to fight it's like out. back okay. one more time at the slip. Well, Paul Lynn drove straight over the top, took his hand, flopped his wrist, and this is a this is everything you could ever want in a match as far as you know hand control and positioning right there. Talbot trying to come back here in the second pull. Down one nothing hey, to Paul like Lynn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul Lynn's got a great strap set up there. Wow. Close your thumb. That's a dream right setup. Do not cover his thumb knuckle. Come this way. Talbot, the established of the two, of course. Lynn trying to make a statement here tonight. Go! That's Lynn's world. Wow, big time. Paul Lynn with full control. Now he's bleeding him. Now he's waiting back. He's waiting. He knows he can pin him. He knows that. He's going to bleed him here. He's gonna wear out his arm and pump a full of blood. He knows he can pin him. Yep. Or maybe not. Paul Talbot holding. Somehow holding. Unbelievable. Paul Talbot is a monster holding there. If he could come back and finish that, he does. Are you kidding me? Wow. Paul Talbot. My goodness. What a pull and what a win. For the assassin, Paul Talbot there to even things up at 1-1. Besides Todd Hutchings, that was there is no other man that can lose his wrist that much yeah. and versus a strong opponent and come back. Let's look back. Just Paul Talbot, brute horsepower. I mean, yeah, plain and simple, this isn't technique, got it. Ben. This is brute horsepower. There's nothing technical about that. He just pulled with everything he had to the side and pinned him.
That's impressive. That's a strong dude. His favorite technique, Talbot's, is. He says, I have no favorite move. He says, I just do whatever my opponent lacks in defending, and he did it right there, I suppose, right? Right. Yeah, let's listen in the corner here, man. Push on him. Yeah. Get that blood in there before you guys start again. Talk about an all-star corner. Oh, my goodness. Mask. But if it feels like it's the 18. You're comfortable just giving him that side? Right. Right. So what's the message that Lynn's right, getting there? They want him to pull him more back and up, I believe. That's what Kenny Hughes and Morocco are saying. They say, you know, don't let him stay at the center of that table and keep it low. Keep it up and then back to you. Because that's what Paul Lynn did effectively in the yes. first match yes. and was able to pin him with relative ease. Right. Yeah. Under half a minute to go until the two men have to be back at the table. 90 seconds between poles. It's 1-1. Paul Lynn, impressive in the... Opening poll, getting yeah. the lead. Talbot equally as impressive coming back. Oh, well, that must sound like a broken record here, but <laughs> this third round is pivotal. It is. <laughs> Every time they're in a 1-1 one -one match, I say it, but I can't help it. It's so pivotal. This round is going to give the momentum to the guy who wins it. Right, 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 right. So, but Wood says, time to go, boys. Back to the table and the pit they go. Good turnout here at Ramshead Live. We're here last year. It was a great event. Back again this year. We'll be in Richmond in a month. Oh, a lively crowd. Great crowd here tonight. A lot of emotion, a lot of support, yep. a lot of energy in the building. I love it. As you said, a very pivotal third pull. Close your Both guys know how important it is. Let's watch way. here. Talbot's way, come around. Close your hands. Go. Oh, Paul that's center table. That's center table. Wait, what? That's center table. Wait, what? Oh, oh, the second decision to Paul Lynn. Yes, a 2-1 lead for Lynn. Don't. I wow. Know, I do have this. What did you think? Don't look at it live. Live. Now I give the pin to Paul Lynn. But let's take a look at the replay. Yeah, we'll get opportunities, and here we go. Paul Lynn takes his hand, rolls it, full hand control. Look at the wrist. Does it go under? Does the wrist of the fingers go under? Right here, Ben. Oh. Mm. That's so close. Now, we do have this year, it has been added, there is video review. If Bart Wood feels he needs to go over and look at it, it's not like football where you throw a challenge flag. Only Bart can make that decision. I don't see, I don't see Bart budging. I, I don't think, either at this point. I think... Uh, <laughs> I just want to let people know that. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. Yep. He's like just shutting it down. Yeah. Frank Bean is down there. He is monitoring the video. Jen Wood, Bart's wife. We gotta get to the strap. I believe I just saw up. Frank Bean confirm the call the that Bart made. Okay. I believe I just saw him confirm that was the right call. Pin. Very good. So 2-1. Paul Lynn on top of Paul Talbot. The first time these two men have went head to head. Yeah, it? you know they came off a Thanksgiving matchup, three three. It was a, it was a, it was a six round matchup where you pull all six rounds mm -hmm. and they they squared up evenly. So they they know each other. But let's listen in a corner here. Let's do it. Back to the table we go. Paul in with the momentum. With the momentum and a chance to close out. Chance for a massive statement here, and I know he wants yes. us badly. Paul Talbot, first place in 14, 15, and 17. You pinning it down is making And Talbot didn't like that last setup. Yeah. I can tell he really didn't like that. He's looking for a better setup here. He wants to strap. I know he does. Okay. He can really put the power down there. And I think Talbot needs to get to strap right here. And I will add those three championships were all left handed for Close Paul Talbot. Right handed, of course, here in the Super Match Showdown Series. That's him. You might have he seen it from my angle. No, I didn't see thumb knuckles, but. Oh, okay. Too high. Go into the strap. That's there you what, go. That's what Talbot wants right. and needs. Trust yep. me. Yep. No trust me here, I do trust you. Thanks, buddy. Of course. But let's make let's make it clear here. Paul Lynn, stronger hand. Yes. He's taking his hand almost every round, exposing his wrist, pressure into the fingers, 
putting Talbot in a very bad like position and angle. I want, I want, I want if Talbot can keep now, his please. hand I'm at least flat, he has the side pressure to pin Paul Lynn. But can he keep his hand and do it? That's the question I want to see answered. And it will be answered this round. Yeah. Paul Lynn, his first time taking part in the Super Match Showdown Series event. Trying to close out a three-time champion in Paul Talbot. It won't be easy. Your cup like this. Oh, no, it won't, but here we go. Yeah, way back. Close your thumbs. Stay right here. Got to go Talbot's way. Talbot's way. Close your hands. Go. Oh, huge shot. That's a pin. It's over. Lightning. Paul Lynn with a massive statement. Paul Lynn takes down Paul Talbot. Huge mutual respect. Big time. Paul Talbot's so humble, and I uh, love to see the mutual respect between these two guys. I like both these guys. That is a massive statement and a huge win here in 502 for Paul Lynn. Well, look at that. He hit, and then he just followed through right away. Right away, through the hand, through the fingers. Took positioning here and was able to just go right to the pad with the second surge right there, as you see, Ben. Yes, indeed. He takes it three to one. And he's standing by in the pit with a guy that's always in the zone, Jason Zone Fisher. Jason. That's right. Congratulations, Paul. Now, you took on Paul Talbot in November, and you drew him to a 3-3 tie. What did you learn from that, and what was the difference here today that put you over the top? I learned I have to be totally focused coming into a super match, and I have to learn how to pull with the buckle. So obviously getting the buckle the first round was a little nerve wracking. But, but me being able to win the first round, things working out my way, it just generated more momentum for me. It seemed like your speed really was the big difference here tonight. I mean, you got off to a fast start in every single round that you won. How important was that? Was that your strategy? Uh, that's, one, that's one of the things I kind of have. I'm kind of fast switch dominant at times, not against everybody, but the second match, it didn't bode well for me because it stopped me, wound up burning me out, but it, it happens. Well, from football, the ultimate team sport, to the ultimate individual sport, arm wrestling, you are an up and comer. Is this a statement here that you made tonight? for your future in this sport? I hope so, we'll see. I gotta, gotta give a big thanks to the good Lord. Without him, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Big thanks to my wife, Joanna. She puts up with all my nonsense because it's nonstop. Big thanks to Storm Chilino, Sam Harris, Kenny Smith and Dave Morocco and Old Line Maryland and Team Lethal Arms. Thank you all for the support, I love you. Amazing, congratulations, Paul. Awesome. Ben, Max, what a start. No doubt, Jason, thanks. And Paul Lynn, a winner, and he told us earlier it was Game of Arms that really got him hooked on the sport. And he comes back and gets a big win here. Takes it 3-1. And I know it meant so much to him. He trained so hard. He told me, I'm peaked. I'm, I'm the best I've ever felt. You know, I, I put in the preparation. I'm really confident I, I can do this and I can win. And I think that self-belief led to the win, big win. No doubt about it. A lot more to come. One match in the book. Still five coming up. We'll go to the women's division next with Michelle Dugan and Angie Rose. It'll be Canaret and Espy, the two big boys going. And then our lightweight title match, it'll be Jeff Hale and Sam Harris. And in the main event, Todd Hutchings and Matt Mask. Let's take a listen to the competitors that are coming up. If I were to design the perfect arm wrestler to beat me, it would look like Matt Mask. The ambition, the adrenaline, everything is way more focused. What's the significance of a WAL hammer? This is my year, my year! It tells you who's the best. Baltimore, Maryland, it's our Supermatch Showdown Series here in the WAL 502, our second event of the season. And before we get on to our next match, let's check in now with WAL head referee Bart Wood. He's in the pit with a lesson in speaking WAL. I'm Bart Wood, head referee of the World Arm Wrestling League. We're going to learn how to speak WAL. This is the arm wrestling peg. The peg is what the competitors have to hold on to the entire match. If their hand comes off, it's a foul. This is the elbow pads. 
the competitor must maintain contact with the top of the elbow pad at all times during the match. If they come off or pop up, that's a foul. This is the pin pad. A competitor must pin their opponent by coming all the way over to the pin pad or breaking the plane of the pin pad coming below it. You get pinned by your wrist to fingertip going below that plane at any point. During a match, you might see a slip. That's when we bring out the WAL strap. I take the two competitors, have their hands palm to palm, put the strap on, wrap it around both of them so they're pulled tight and they are tied to one another. There's nowhere to run, there's nowhere to hide. The stronger arm will win. All right, so in our next match, we'll go to the women's side. On the left, Michelle Dugan and Angie Rose will be the next match here in Baltimore. These two, they talked a little bit of a little bit of trash on social media, Max. We'll get into that as we move along, all in good fun, of course. And Michelle Dugan has beaten cancer twice. We'll get into that as we move along as well. What a story of inspiration that is. Tail of the tape, what grabs your eyes the most here, Max? You can't pull much from here, but the background that I love about these two female arm wrestlers is they both dominated the middleweight class. Angie on the left arm, Michelle on the right arm. Yeah. So they've met before. Michelle won on the right, Angie won on the left, but now it's a whole new year and a whole new matchup. It certainly is, as we welcome you up to our broadcast position. Max Thomas, Ben Holden with you, and let's take a closer look at Angie Rose and take us through some of the things she does well, what you like about her style and her approach in this great sport. Well, I know she's been pulling since the 90s, so she's an established veteran puller. Michelle Dugan, the more newcomer, only been in here a couple of years, so, she, so Angie's gonna have the veteran experience, and that's gonna play a huge factor in this match, Ben. All right, and on the other side, you're talking about Michelle Dugan. What's the book on her? More power. Four. She's a lot of power, a horsepower type puller. Maybe not the most technical, but just the type of strength that can overwhelm her opponents, and uh, that's going to be her key to win. It's just overwhelming horsepower. Right. We'll see what takes place here momentarily, inching closer to the start of that match. And we go to our fan poll, and it's brought to us by Instagram. Does that surprise you in any way, shape, or form? It does a little bit because Michelle has the most recent win over Angie. Right. But yeah, I guess Angie's on a tear, and uh, the fans think that she's going to come up with the upset. All right, so that is our Instagram fan poll, and great to have you with us here on BR Live tonight here at the WAL Supermatch Showdown Series here from Baltimore. Maryland and let's now go to our hit announcer Ian Riccoboni for the introductions of the next two competitors the following contest is a women's middleweight bout scheduled best of five pulls introducing first this puller returned to arm wrestling after a 16 year absence in 2017 this Canadian star showed no rust when re-entering the pit after dedicating her life to helping others as a nurse and capture the 2017 left-handed middleweight hammer. Standing at five feet, eight inches tall, weighing in tonight at 151 pounds, she is Angie Rose. Competing out of Syracuse, New York. Standing five feet, five inches tall, this 2017 right-handed middleweight hammer winner found arm wrestling while twice defeating cancer. She's used grit, determination, and tenacity to defeat her opponents in the pit. Come Weighing in tonight at 153 pounds, she is the Black Scorpion, Michelle Dugan. So the two have entered the pit. Michelle Dugan, she is nine years free of skin cancer and melanoma, 10 years free of thyroid cancer. What a story, what determination, what heart. 
and what battle she has. And the money has come out once again, Mr. Tobin. Uh, that's a good sight to see. But <laughs> I mean, I'm almost more excited to see this female matchup because they never disappoint. They're always a war, and I expect nothing less than this one, Ben. We saw Angie Rose last year in Cleveland. She defeated Tamara Mitz in that match. Come back a little bit, Ken Hawk. Oh, yeah, this is going to be an intense one, I think, Ben. Both yep. ladies both these girls are square. friends off the table. No but side They side both side. said when it's past the table, table that's side. out the window. Yeah, this, this is going to be aggression. That's the five, all of our way, matches way, here hey. in the Super Match Showdown series. And look how close they are, Ben. Yeah. Girls. This is like a fight in a phone booth here. They want to be, <laughs> they want to be in each other's face. Yep. You guys are focused, but not listening to me. So, you know what that sound means? Straight to the straps. Yep. Are they a little too hyped? Is that what it sounded like? That's what Bart Wood was kind of echoing there. I felt that a little bit. Yeah, they were both really close, really behind their arm, and uh, I think they're both wanting to set a huge leap and win this first match and get momentum on their side. Look at the focus and intensity. Guys. I love it. It's getting me fired up, honestly, yes. man. I live for this. Don't make me fight you, honey. Mentioned that. There was a little trash talk between these two on social media. Angie Rose on Twitter back on May 9th said, I'm going to rip your arm off, rip it off like a chicken wing and eat it. I'm hungry. Yeah, shout out Buffalo Wild Wings. No kidding. <laughs> Put some in the corner for her after she wins. Michelle Dugan was training with Dave Chafee. Good training right partner. Arm you can pull right off. Exactly. Here we go, though, Ben. Yeah, We're ready. This is going to tell a lot. Close your hand. First pull in this best of five. Michelle Dugan! With the top roll hit to the pad. Round one, Dugan. Yes. That was quick, really quick. So a one nothing lead for Michelle Dugan. They'll have 90 seconds to go to their corners. And reset, reload, and come off for pull number two. And from looking at this replay, Ben, yeah. Angie just, she didn't have a setup. She didn't have a good setup there. Her hand was underneath Michelle's. You see that? With Michelle's fingers on top of her like that, it just exposed her wrist and hand. I think Angie can make an adjustment here and end up in a better angle for the second round. Bill, Bill Sinks. Sinks. Mm -hmm. We saw him in Cleveland last year in one of the matches there. Still got that all-star cast in the other corner yeah, over there. You know, they're just hanging out. Matt Mask, Raw Vision Jr., middleweight yep. hammer holder. Yep. Looks like he's talking to somebody else about a match. Those Canadians, they stick together. Yeah. Mask from Red Deer, Alberta. Okay. You got that leverage. And I like what Mask is saying. He's telling her, rise up, yeah. more into the fingers with more of a post. That's what I believe he's talking about. Okay. Angie Rose from Kamloops, British Columbia. You can hit a little bit faster. If you, let her get, if you give her anything on this one. Did I hit her? She hit. I don't even know. You hit. You hit. I did. She couldn't hit. Well, Bill Sinks is saying, you got to get the hit. Yeah, yeah. You got to get the first hit. Don't let her yeah. make her first move. Yeah. Exactly. One thing you got to watch out, Ruff. Bart did the right thing. He put the strap where it should have been. Time winding down. Bart Wood's going to come to the table moment, momentarily. Do it again. Do it again. Yeah. Yeah. So they switch sides, and they're back. To the table for pull number two, Dugan getting it done in convincing fashion for the one nothing lead. But I'm looking for Angie and making adjustments. She's the veteran with the experience and she knows angles and technique. I'm looking for a posting style, more up pressure move from Angie. And there it is. Yes. Strap time. Yes. That looks much better from Angie. Ben. Yeah. I think this round could be different. It could be. Let's see it. Both focused. Remember, it's good. It's good. Make sure it's where you want. Same thing. She's got it right. Good look in there. The eyes of Michelle Dugan. Angie Rose. They're all business here. They're all business. Our good friend Neil Pickup. We had a call with him recently, and he mentioned, and I said this to Angie Rose this morning. You know where I'm going, right? 
He said he feels like she has progressed athletically, physically more than anyone, men's or women's, in the WAL in the last 12 months. She looked at me like, well, I've always been in good shape. <laughs> Close the thumbs. Right Just there. from the arm wrestling Close standpoint. Is what he oh, look at that, Jay! There it is. There it is. Takes a huge win. He saw the positioning, man. Yes. I can't wait to see this replay. Yep. That was beautiful work by Rose turned in there. Wow. What one now? Beautiful win. And the technique that I saw was a higher position with a post. You see how she pushes up into her fingers? Yes. Then she goes sideways. That was the key there for Angie. Establishing her hand, pushing up, then into the fingers, then sideways, then able to use the, her pronation and hand strength to finish. Look at that angle, yeah. And, and look at the reaction. The emotion. Ooh. She's back in this match, and she knows it, Ben. She is. And that's exactly what Matt's told her to do. Yep. <laughs> nice coach. We'll see Matt in our main event against Todd Hutchings. That'll be our fifth match of the night. Match number four of the night. It'll be a lightweight title battle between the hammer holder, Sam Harris, and the man he beat last year, Jeff Hale. I could talk a lot about that match, but I'm going to stay focused here and just say that, uh, again, this third round, Ben, is so pivotal. Yes. I have to say it because it is. It you is. saw what it's happened fact. with Paul Lynn. He yeah. won the third round. Yep. Guess what? He won the match. Yep. It happens time and time again yep. in a five-round super match. If it's 1-1, one, one, whoever wins the third round wins the match. So many times. Yep. Working that arm is Matt Mass. Time winding down. Bart Wood will be calling both. Angie Rose and Michelle Dugan back to the table here. The 90 seconds has expired. Here we go. The pivotal third pull. This is it. Bring this back. Bring that back. Close up, Michelle. Bring this down. Right here. Uh, you got your I, I will get it even. Right there is even. Close your thumbs. Let's see it, Michelle. Don't cover your thumb, Apple. Close works. your hands. Go! Oh. Wow! And she clips her fingers! She's holding out to her fingers! She's trying to finish! She gets it! She gets it! Wow! And that's elite level technique, man. Elite level technique there. It started to slip. Most pullers would just pull back. Let's watch right here, Ben. You said it, man. Third pull, so big, and Angie Rose got it. Look right here, they start to slip apart. And, and Michelle starts to think that it's gonna slip apart. Ron, Angie clamps down to her fingers, won't let him go, and is able to finish through that move. Veteran move. Look at this angle of it, Ben. Bam, clamped. So hard to run when your opponent grabs your two front fingers like that. Ugh. Ugh. Can't imagine. Yeah. Either get your arm pinned or get your fingers broken. Right. That's your choices there. <laughs> <laughs> and unless you're Matt Mask, I'll, I'll take the first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> unless you're Matt Mask, you're going to take the pen. Bring that thumb up with you. Right? That's the corner of Angie Rose. Michelle's husband and Bill Sinks in the corner. James, her husband, yes. Yeah, keeping the morale up. Michelle's got the strength. There's no question there, Ben. Mm -hmm. But technically, I'm just seeing Angie make the right adjustments and do the exact right technical aspect of setting up for a win, and she's executing. Michelle needs an adjustment here. Yeah. Initially, when she was dealt the news that she had cancer, she felt she needed an outlet, did Michelle Dugan. Her husband, and the head referee, Bart Wood, they're all friends in this community, so well connected, as we all know, suggested this to her, and it was a great outlet for her. Look at her now. It brought about a new passion. You know, she just told me she never competed in sports, but she just found an outlet in uh, weight training, and it led to competing in art wrestling. She's been passionate about it ever since. And right now, Angie Rose up 2 1. Dugan's got a winner. This thing's over. Simple. Yeah, winner go home. Yep. Sorry. Come on, close your, close your thumbs. Come on, Michelle. Try to keep that shoulder back. Michelle's setting up more inside here. Now to get behind her. Strap. 30 seconds to get the grip. 
And I actually hey, think in this match, the strap will favor down. Michelle. She's okay. more power. Yeah. So the strap is really going to favor her. I believe. I believe this round could go her way because of the strap. But let's see what happens. Yeah, here. indeed. Sports is, as I often say, the ultimate reality television. You never know. There's no better drama than this. No. Look at the passion and intensity in both their faces. They're so focused on this match. It's like you, you just block everything out when you're at that table, Ben. And it's, uh, it's a great feeling. I miss it. Get me back in there. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out W. We'll put a headset on you yeah. when you're down there pulling. Yeah. I'll call my own match. I'd love it. That's right. Okay. Let's see what happens here. Another match. <laughs> here we go. We get back on track. 2 1 Angie Rose can close it up. And I like Michelle's setup. Close She's very thumb. high to her hand. Look at this that. High to the strap. Close her hand. Go. Oh, but Angie takes it. And she just pumps and gets the win. Angie Rose finishes Michelle Dugan. The victory, so in two matches, 3-1 in both. Paul Lynn won that third poll you talked about. You talked about it with me all last season. Angie Rose gets the second. She takes it and wins 3-1. So we look back at the fourth pole ending in the pin. And Angie Rose, the victor. And let's get down to Jason, who's in the pit with a victorious Angie Rose. Thanks, Ben. Angie, congratulations. You've been training like crazy over the last year and have physically transformed. Where does your motivation come from? Uh, just wanting to be the best at the sport. Um, it's a thrill, keeps me going, and yeah, I love the sport. Well, it clearly all that hard work paid off here tonight. Now, over the past couple of weeks, you were talking a lot of trash on social media. Was that part of your strategy to get in Michelle's head a little bit? I wanted to have fun with this. The men do it. I texted Michelle. I said, let's have some fun with this. Let's light up Facebook. And uh, yeah, we had fun with it. Why not, eh? <laughs> All right, yeah. Did you have fun? How much fun are you having here as a part of the WAL and winning here tonight? Oh, I'm having the time of my life, relishing it. It's awesome. That's amazing. Any advice to women who are watching out there who think they want to get a part of this too? Get a hold of Google arm wrestlers in your area, teams, and anyone can do this. We need more women. It's just a fantastic sport. Great people. I love it. It's a really amazing community, and you are definitely a big part of it. Congratulations here tonight. What is next for you? How will you f use this victory here tonight to fuel you moving forward? Mm, I don't know. We'll see what Wall has planned. We'll just see what Wall has planned. I might go to the Worlds, too. Who knows? All right. Well, you are cool, calm, and collected after winning. Go celebrate. Congratulations, Angie. Hard work pays off. All right, Ben, back to you. Thanks, Jason, and congrats to Angie Rose. Gets the cash, gets the win. And my broadcast partner has moved over about 10 feet for a little demonstration. Max, it's all yours. Tonight with uh, Brendan, who's the winner of the Freeland match, and we're just going to go over what just happened here. So you saw Angie. She took the hit, and she took her hand, exposing the wrist, making Michelle flop backwards. And from there, she was able to dictate, use her pressure, use her power to go through the fingers and finish the match for the win. Good stuff. Good stuff, Max, thanks. And Jerry Cataret backstage, getting in his groove and getting his mind right, getting ready to take on Ryan Espy. That one's coming up next here from Rams Head Live here in Baltimore, Maryland, here in our Super Match Showdown Series here in the WAL. It's 5.02, two matches down, three to go. Cataret and Espy coming your way when we come back on VR Live. Set live, Baltimore, Maryland, Supermatch Showdown Series 502 here in the WAL. With Max Tobin, Jason Zone Fisher, all of our crew. My name is Ben Holden. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast so far here tonight on BR Live. For those of you just joining us on BR Live, let's give you a little inside look at some of the rules of the game here in the WAL. 
The referee begins the match by centering the competitor's hands on the table. The hands must be level, close, and tightly set. If their grip slips, they will be placed in the strap. During the match, the arm wrestlers must keep their elbow on the pad at all times. To win the match, a competitor must touch his opponent's hand or wrist to the pad or break the plane of the pin line. Three fouls is a loss. All right, so our rules of the game and the men and women that handle said rules of the game. This is like synchronized refereeing. Bart Wood, Jen Wood, and then Frank Bean, who's our video referee tonight. Nicely done, and we appreciate what they do. All veterans, yes. all, all been in the game a long time, so I trust their uh, skill set and the viewpoint and knowledge. And let's get backstage to Jason Zone Fisher. Jason. All right, Jeff, former lightweight champion, now trying to reclaim that crown. Where's your mindset right now about to take on Sam Harris here tonight? It's on me, baby. This is the devil's redemption. Tonight's the night. I've waited 365 days for this moment. Tonight's my time. It's my time. Well, you seem very confident. Would you say that your confidence is at an all-time high? What is going to be the difference here tonight that's going to put you over the top to reclaim the hammer? The difference is I'm not off the couch this time. I've been in the game for over a year now. I'm ready to go out there and slaughter a fool and jack another man's soul. All right, well, you can w talk the talk. We're going to find out if you can walk the walk. What would it mean to you if you defeat Sam Harris here tonight and reclaim that hammer? I'm back on top of the mountain, baby. I've been there before. I can do it again. Tonight's the night. Redemption. Darksiders, baby. <laughs> All right, I cannot wait for this match. Good luck, Jeff. We appreciate the time. Ben? Jason, get out of there safely, my friend. There's the hammer that they will compete for. It's beautiful. It's so pretty. Mm. Oh, I love it. It really is. And Sam Harris got it last year in Cleveland, as you heard there, talking with Jason Zone Fisher. And Jeff Hale is an unbelievable competitor. So, too, is Sam Harris. But coming up next, a big time battle, big in every sense, Max Tom and Ryan Espy. Weighing in at 383, Jerry Cataret, a slim 333. Are you kidding me? I'm not a math expert, Ben, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> these guys add up to over 700 pounds on the table. That's you pretty know good what math. that means? Yeah. That means a lot of power and a lot of pressure. I'm, I hold this. I hope the table can hold it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at these two, a closer look, and Max will tell us some of the intricacies that these men have. And there's Jerry Cataract. What does he do so well? He's just unorthodox. He pulls in an angle that's very difficult to beat, especially if you're not a high top level technique master. And that angle is the flop wrist press, and he's the best in the world yeah. at doing it. There and he you is can against, see him pinning yeah. Devin Lorat with it. Yeah. Against Devin last year, and we yeah. saw him in there. He had an epic match last year in Cleveland against the monster Michael Todd, who we'll see coming up in the Supermatch Showdown series. And then we talk about Ryan SB. He's out of Manitoba. What's the book on him, Max? He's a, a very experienced guy, over 20 years in the sport. He's no rookie by any means. He's technical, he's got angles, he's got horsepower, but he's facing a one-trick pony. That's what got one of the best tricks in the game, Jerry Cataret. All right, let's take a look at the ratings that are compiled by the WAL. They are compiled amongst referees, fellow competitors. Here's how they stack up. Anything in particular, grab your eyes amongst those numbers. Well, I mean, Jerry Cataret's power is freakish. Yeah. It, the amount that he can press down into the side is almost inhuman-like. I couldn't even imagine what it feels like. Probably just feels like you go outside and try to pull a light post. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? <laughs> you can't move that. But maybe Ryan Espy can find an angle and, and find some way through it. But it's going to be a tall task, a very tall task. This will be a lot of fun, folks. Before we get to it, Let's get to know Ryan Espy a little bit better as we go at home with him. Travis Roberts in the morning, sunny, 16 degrees, high 27. We're going to push up into the 30s. Very special guest. My name is Ryan Espy. I'm from Portage La Prairie, Thanks, Manitoba, boys. Canada. Joining me in studio right now, it is Talk Mr. Ryan Espy. How's it going? Great, Travis. How are you? I am fantastic. <laughs> 
<laughs> in Portage, I'm just Ryan, and uh, that's the way it's always going to be. I'm not getting anything special because I'm that arm wrestling guy. Okay, you're the champion. You're the champion of Country 93. Soon to be the champion, hopefully, the World Arm Wrestling League. My whole theory behind training and, and getting ready for a tournament is maybe a little different than some. I train in holding positions and subtle movements. My club has uh, been around for about three years. They drive for hours to get here every two weeks. It's just as important for me to have them as it, as it is for them to come out here and train with me. I didn't like uh, some of the things that happened in Portage over the years, and I put my money where my mouth is, and I ran for council. We're now in the city council chambers at City Hall in Portage of Prairie, Manitoba. My responsibility is the public safety committee, so I look after the fire department, the uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and uh, animal control. Well, it's my second term, so it's a lot of work and a lot of responsibility, and you do your best to make as many people happy as you possibly can. All right, so a close look at Ryan Espy. Let's get to our pit announcer once again. Take it away, Ian. The following contest is a super heavyweight showdown scheduled for best out of five pulls. Introducing first, this native of Portage La Prairie enters the pit tonight with over two decades of experience pulling. Standing at six feet, four inches tall, this competitor is one of the largest super heavyweights in WAL. This 17-time Canadian national champion has also captured three recognized world championships. Weighing in tonight, tipping the scales at 383 pounds, he is Ryan the Big Train Espy. He enters tonight's bout with three decades of experience, 27 at the professional level. This car dealer ownership stands at six feet, one inches tall, and weighs 330 pounds. With a WAL record of 24 and five, this Rehoboth, Massachusetts native looks to pick up a victory in his quest to earning a shot at the super heavyweight hammer. He is Jerry B. Hey, I know those. I know those earbuds. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> Shout out for uh, my buddy Ben Holden for the Len Jerry bar of those. But uh, let's make a clear statement here. Yes, Jerry's the favorite. Yes, no question about it. He's the clear, clear favorite in this match, and uh, I'm excited to see if uh, anything from Ryan's side can make a difference here. But Jerry is the the man right to beat right now. Right to the table, they go. Jerry coming off two wins in his last matches. Michael Todd and Matt Mass, two of the best in the world. That's a that's a good list to build for your last two matches, isn't it, Ben? It's a great list. Doesn't get any better than that. That's the five here. You gotta come right, you gotta come down. If you're gonna scream me, you're gonna scream too. I will, I gotta get the webbing down first. Right there. Close your thumb. Jerry only knows Stay one right direction. Yeah, sideways. Yeah, watch this, Ben. Close your... Going no, to the strap. He's strap. He's moving. Going to the strap. strap. Relax. Which actually favors Woo! slightly, I want to say very slightly, favors SP because he can use it to leverage and get out on Jerry's hand. And if he can pull Let Jerry away from his business. body to his side of the table, he'll Let have a chance, and he needs the strap to do it. The only problem is with the strap, yeah. Jerry's power is magnified Even to, more. to an 18-wheeler just right running there? over your arm. It's already yeah. a 9 and a 1 out of 10. <laughs> nine, a 1 out of 10, it'd be about a 15 <laughs> yeah. probably, right? Yeah. And uh, I haven't felt it, and I don't want to feel it. I don't want to pull Jerry. That's that's yeah, a death Ryan, wish. Oh, for sure. Bit. Jerry Into looking not eyes. nervous at all. No. Come on. Calm, cool, and collected. Yeah. Looks like he's just another day at the office. 
Ryan looking a little more tense. Square up. Strap is applied. They get him into position. And Jerry's going to look to just press straight sideways. Doesn't matter if he has his wrist or not. Oh, Ryan pulls way out. Yes. Running back. Running back. Yes, he is. He's got a better position. He's in the back of the pack, but Jerry's still pressing. Wow, this is a crazy spot. What do they call it? Restart. for what? For what? He's got two fouls. We got one foul up you up the front first. Then we got a foul here. No, he fouled first. I don't. He fouled first. I got you on the start coming off the front. No, it's a, as soon as he fouls, we go the restart. We got one foul on Jerry. That's it. All right, the start. Remember the rule. You start. You foul first. Well, I you, believe you guys what we're saying, saying, saying is Jerry first. fouled first. Correct. Then Ryan fouled off the back. Yelled. Right, right. I got a runner on Jerry. Consecutive fouls cause a restart. Yes. The foul once the other guy fouls. So bring this back up. Oh, he's coming up on me. Hold on, hold on one second. Hold on. Yep. So they get readjusted here in the first pull here in this best of five. I think Ryan SP took a page out of Travis Bajan's book yeah, you, you, there as far as how to pull way. Jerry. <laughs> straight <laughs> back. Straight yeah. back. Don't yeah. even worry about the yeah. staying on the pad. You better get control of it or it's over quick. Close your thumbs. Close your hands. Go. Oh, better. Jerry looks comfortable, quite. But look how low Jerry's fingers are on Ryan's wrist. This is helping Ryan. This is huge. If Ryan can get up Jerry's thumb, if he can post and get his fingers even lower, he'll have a chance. But Jerry's about an inch from the pad or less. Did they call it? They did. Mark Wood says he got it. First oh, pin, Frank Jerry right. Big Daddy had a red. Nothing lead, 90 seconds to regroup. They'll go to their respective corners. And we'll take a few looks back here, Max. I told you, Jerry just wants to go sideways. It doesn't matter how his hand and wrist is positioned. And that's exactly what he did. Surged, got the pin. So a one nothing lead and big opportunity is Cataret is the, as you said, the best presser in the world. USA! And it's a big opportunity for Ryan Espy. I mean, all the pressure's on Cataract, right? Yeah, I mean, Espy's the underdog. He's got none to lose and everything to gain. And I think he did a, a very, Let's do this one a little you know, quick. good technique, but Jerry just too much horsepower and yeah. uh, Espy just couldn't get behind his arm or get enough height on Jerry's arm the, to be able to finish. Round, yeah. Not a lot of talk in SB's no, corner. Not I much mean, going on. What there. are you gonna say? Don't get much. You know, yep. Don't <laughs> don't let him get behind his arm. Angie Rose, a winner here tonight. She won our second match of the night against Michelle Dugan. Both matches have gone three one so far. Paul Lynn, three one over Paul lose. Talbot. Angie Rose, three one over Michelle Dugan. It's going to take a lot for SP to get back in this match because Cataret looks dominant so far. He does. SP a very textbook type arm wrestler, but many will tell you there's not a page in the textbook that can help you with yeah, big daddy, right? right? Jerry's style is just so hard to pull against. Is he doesn't Battle care about right? his hand. Yeah. He's right just going to push so hard to the side right that you're going to get Close run over where you have Go. hand control or not. Just like that. We'll go to the strap. If Ryan can pull it to his side of the table, meaning the A side, if he can pull Jerry off the start with a hit, then he's in the match. But if he's letting Jerry surge sideways, it's 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 over. Yeah, his cards are they're going to end up not looking good. Look what you're doing to my wrist. So Espy told us this morning when we had a chance to visit with all the competitors, he said he was 355 in November. He's now 383 tonight. Said he got the call about six weeks ago. Yeah, he's been bulking all winter. He said he wanted to come in this match strong. I mean, everybody wants to come in at their biggest and best when the WL calls, but 
Jerry Cataret is a guy that no one wants to accept a match against simply because of how strong and how brutal his style is. I mean, who could forget that epic pull last year? It was almost eight minutes versus Michael Todd. I mean, he broke his hand, broke, which he won, Ben. He beat that yes. hammer holder, yes. Michael Todd, in yes. the Super Bowl last season. Okay, right there. Look at your foot against the side of the Go. table. Ready to press. Another one of his trademarks. And Ryan stopped him, but is, again, look, it's on Jerry's side. That's yes. my point, Ben. He yeah. can't stop him there. Right. Pull back. Too far back, yeah. right? Yeah. Way too far. Yeah. yeah. Jerry's almost nearly impossible to move from that spot. It's on. Yeah, cameras all over. Great and Jerry's out. an inch from the pad. Yep. And an inch from the two. Oh, that's that's the it. It's another pin for Cataret. Mark called it. And a 2 0 lead for Jerry Cataret trying to make it a clean sweep of 90 seconds to regroup. Wow. Strong as a motherfucker. I just heard some mutual hey. respect from Jerry. He said, You're strong. Yeah. But. The kind of pressure Jerry puts sideways and just unimaginable, Ben. I, I can't even describe it. Yeah. I don't really even know what kind of analogy to put on it. Former football player in his younger days. And congrats to Cataret's son, Mason. My little guy. He was going to play Division II college football at Franklin Pierce. Jerry lit right up this morning. I had to ask him about that. We both have front of sons that are seniors in high school. And his is playing football. Mine's going on to play lacrosse. So proud moment for him. Let's listen in a little bit here. I'm going to try to get a little more position. He might be more comfortable. Yeah. And you heard SP is trying to get a better position. Yeah. He knows he can't win from that spot. Right. Over on Jerry's side of the table where his arm bogged down low. Right. He needs to be up high and on his side of the table. Yep. Then he can get behind his arm and press, similar to what Matt Mask or Devin did when they were actually able to pin Jerry. Yeah. So let's go check in on Jerry Cataret. You said it when he came out. He's just calm. He's already back at the table, ready to close this thing out in three. Two nothing leading the best of five. Cataret puts that right leg up into the table. I come down, come down, come down. He only needs one angle, Ben. Yeah. Close your thumb. Straight close, your thumb. Yes. close your thumb. I am close. <laughs> That's why he doesn't. Close your hands. Go. Come on, Jerry. And the strap will be needed here in our yeah. third pull, this best of five. And look at this slip here, Ben. Ryan posts, rolls, pr pronates through Jerry's hand, but it doesn't matter. Jerry's only going to go one direction and one angle, and it's going to be very hard to stop that angle no matter what you do. Down your line, Jerry Cataret, you mentioned those big wins he had last year, wants to be in Atlanta this season. He wants to compete for the super weight heavyweight hammer that Michael Monster Todd currently holds. And I just want to also mention that Jerry's actually been pulling since 1989, yeah. the year I was born. <laughs> That was a year after I graduated high school. Oh, wow. You're making me feel young. I love it. Yeah, right. Thanks, buddy. No problem, man. That's what partners do. <laughs> I don't feel a day over 35, though. Nice. It's all about how you feel, bro. Let's get back yep. to the action. Two nothing. Cataract can close out. Oh, early hit by Ryan. A little bit better position. He's a little higher. Look at his hand and wrist. Yep. It's a little higher. He might have something. He thinks he's got something. I don't think so. No. Jerry. Big Daddy. Big Daddy. Wow. Jerry came in confident. He did. He's fairly confident. That's three wins in a row for Jerry. Yes. He's feeling good. So Cataret, he'll momentarily speak with our Jason Zone Fisherman. Let's look back at the pin max. Ryan thought he had an angle. He thought he could get behind his arm. Nope. Jerry with the press. Straight <laughs> sideways under the pad. Yep. Look at this. Look at Ryan's wrist dip under the pin line right here. Bam. That's a pin. All right. The winner, Jerry Cataret. In the pit now with Jason Zone Fisher.
Jerry, you've been pulling for 30 years. Holy are, shit, don't tell people my age. <laughs> all right, well, you're, you're 34 seven, years old. One. You started when you were four years old. Jerry, is this, are, are you just hitting your prime right now? Are you at your most confident you've ever been? <laughs> Let's just leave it I'm confident. I don't know if it's the most, but every day is a good day. Now, Ryan Espy is a former champion in Canada. He's arm wrestled all over the world. You made that look fairly easy. How was that match for you, and, and how is Ryan as a competitor? Uh, he's strong as an ox, and he's a great competitor, great for the sport. Look at my wrist. Ooh, yeah, that is black and blue. We'll get a, little, a shot of that a later. A real estate agent did that to me. <laughs> <laughs> that a beast. Yeah, he definitely left a mark, but you are the victor here tonight. You've got a lot of momentum on your side. Is there anyone in particular that you want to take on this year? What is your goal for this current WAL season? Well, I think the system overlooked me last year, but we know who had the best record last year. In the super heavyweight class, that would be me, right? I'm the guy that beat, right? And, and, let's, for the record, let's remember, I'm the guy that beat Michael Todd. All right, well, it's gonna be a great WAL season that might set up something that is coming later this year. Who knows, we'll see. Congrats, Jerry. Ben, back to you. Congrats. Thank you, Jason, and you heard him right there making his case still to come. Our lightweight title match between Sam Harris and the Hale Razor, Jeff Hale, and our main event, Matt Mask and Todd Zilla, Todd Hutchings, and Sam Harris. He's strutting around in the hallway with that hammer. It's a good Ready way to, to warm up. It. That's a great way to warm up. A couple, couple, you know, couple lifts with the hammer, a couple bicep curls, or just stare at it and let the confidence build. And yeah. that's exactly what my boy's doing right now. And that is coming up next, our lightweight title match for the hammer. Sam Harris won it last year. Can he repeat against the same man he beat last year? The answer when we come back. An unorthodox training tip that actually works. Um. Um. <laughs> I have tons of them. Oh, you weigh all my secrets, huh? Spend a lot of time moving your arm. I'm a big fan of one-arm pull-ups. Whether it's supination, pronation. Sometimes I'll hold the baby. You know, now that she's a little bit older, I'll hold her and do some one-arm pull-ups. Rising, sinking, cupping, flexion. Keeping blood flow and oxygen at the highest peak levels possible. I think that's bull. I just love to be in the hook. I train a lot of hook. We fight a lot in losing positions and stuff like that. Getting a rope. Climbing ropes. Tying it to a big tire. Climbing like uh, on bars. Just sit back and just pull it to you. When I'm driving to and from work. I'll hook up the kettlebell on whatever machine I'm doing. A couple bungee cords with my fat grip attached to the holy shit handle on the passenger side of the truck. And I'm always pulling on the kettlebell, so I'm always working my hand over there. So while I'm driving, I can work away just like in the movie over the top. There are no secrets in armors and I'm sick and tired of hearing people tell me that. I set up um, two by fours uh, in, the, in the rafters. Hey, what's the secret? What's the trick? There's no fucking trick. You put your fingers over them and I do my pull-ups at 90 degree angles with just the fingertips. It's simple. You pin the dude. I have recently built a gym in the back garden. Have I used all the equipment in it? No. I've had a go on him, but my main training is arm wrestling and I'm gonna stick to that the whole time. A lot to digest there. I got some good tips for working out when I get back to Michigan. Yeah. Here at Rams Head Live, Baltimore, Maryland, with Max Tobin, Jason Zone Fisher, all of our crew. My name is Ben Holden here for WAL 502 in our Supermatch Showdown series. And let's go back. We go back to Paul Lynn and Paul Talbot. Lynn won 3-1. Yeah, great first round matchup. Paul Lynn able to dictate that match and win with a top roll. And speaking of top rolls, Angie Rose doing the same thing with her big win, three to one over Michelle Dugan. Yep. And then forget top rolling. Jerry doesn't need all that. <laughs> that's for, that's too fancy for Jerry. Just He's press gonna it do it the get old it over with, way. right? Yeah. Sla just slap his hand against the pad and win. Still to come, we've got our main event. It'll be our fifth and final match of this great night here on VR Live. Todd Zilla, Todd Hutchings, who went against Devin Larratt in 501. And the wild horse, always entertaining, always intense, always brings it. Matt Mask, that is going to be fun. But before we get to that, we have a title. Where's the hammer? 
Uh, Did Harris it. take it? Yeah, it's his. It's his. Oh, <laughs> man. I went, I went by him in the hallway. I had to make a stop between uh, breaks there. He was still strutting around with it. And let's take a look at the tail of the tape here between the defending champion, or the reigning champion, I should say, on the right, Sam Harris, and the Hail Razor, Jeff Hale. You know, this tail of the tape isn't going to say enough. What you need to do is look at their previous matchup. Sam Harris took the win, but Jeff, in his own words, was not prepared and not at the level he typically is. Yep. Now he is. Yeah. So that's the tale of the tape. This is the best Jeff Hale versus the best Sam Harris. Who's stronger? Yeah. I, I mean, if there's a more entertaining competitor in the WAL than Jeff Hale, I want to meet him because yeah. this guy brings it every single time, Max. I'm a huge Jeff Hale fan, yeah. even though that clip showed him embarrassingly pinning me and destroying me. <laughs> It, but I can't help it. I love Jeff Hale. He's such so entertaining. His character's so great for the sport. And this guy is really going to amp up the crowd. I guarantee it, Ben. He will. Last year in Cleveland, he came out in the vans. And then he brought him back in Atlanta. He's got a new look tonight. Sam Harris, you know Sam very well. Yeah, Sam's one of my good buddies. I, you know, I pulled with him, trained with him. He's very strong. He's got great angles. And uh, he's very opposite style of Jeff as far as the technique goes. And that's his advantage here. Leverage, technique, hand strength, and obviously the hammer and the confidence. No question about it. Sam Harris is relatively new to this sport. As we take a look now with the ratings card, I know you reference that tail of the tape but this might give those watching a little bit more insight with these numbers yeah i mean you know jeff hale's an inside hook puller so of course you can look at the hook there yeah. favoring jeff but sam he's got the speed and the top roll and if he gets in position he can finish jeff's gonna have to find a way to get this match inside that's where he wants that's exactly what he wants all right let's get to know sam harris a little bit more in the recent visit to his hometown, it's Sam Harris at home. I'm Sam Harris, I'm from New Paris, PA. Today is the Pleasantville Fair, they have truck pulling. Truck pulling is one of my hobbies. That's kind of been in my blood since I was 17. I think I got my setup pretty good, and then it comes down to horsepower. That's another win for the Pleasantville truck pull. Three years in a row, I'll take that. The family we business is Max. raising flowers and produce. Us brothers, we do you know, metal roofing, nice. running a hammer, nailing nails, you know, putting screws in, lifting metal, squeezing tin snips every one, day. Oh, it's yeah. all yeah, me yeah, working yeah, my right. hands. So strong hand and wrists, that would be the key for me. All the power starts at your hand, and then it just goes through the rest of your body. Kind of mimics the strap. Just hold it. Without separating. That's my secret very few people know about. I started arm wrestling in 2010. I used to arm wrestle all my co-workers. I could beat all of them, so I thought I'd beat anyone, you know, in a tournament. I took a lot of losses started getting better by by losing I should say and once you lose you know how to you know better yourself through the years I have 10 state championships and seven national championships um, my goal would be to be the best in the league I'm shooting to beat everybody I want to be the one on top the one winning All right, so the crowd ready. Let's get down to our pit announcer, Ian Riccoboni, for the introductions. Ian. The following contest is the first half of our double main event. It is for the WAL Lightweight Hammer. Introducing first the challenger, standing at 5 feet 7 inches tall, weighing 166 pounds, this geological consultant from Tulsa, Oklahoma, enters the pit tonight with an 11 and 2 WAL record. This former collegiate baseball player has turned his love for competition into a shot at the WAL Lightweight Hammer by winning last year's Lightweight Battle Royal. He is the Hill Racer Jam. And his opponent, 
enters the pit tonight from New Paris, Pennsylvania. With a WAL record of 28 and 7, this roofer captured the WAL lightweight hammer at WAL 406. Standing at 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 166 pounds, he enters Rams Head Live, the reigning, defending, and undisputed WAL lightweight champion. Keeper of the prestigious hammer, he is Sam Harris. So Harris comes out with the hammer. Looking confident. But Jeff Hale, he's already bringing, bringing all the confidence and arrogance and character out and everything to throw Sam off his game. Yes, and he's also bringing the 90s back. He's got the fanny pack on. He's got his Reebok pumps on as well. There's the cash on the table. And in this lightweight title match between Jeff Hale and Sam Harris. Art Wood calls them to the table. Here we go. Square shoulders. I need you palm to palm. Best of five. And the tension's building right here, Ben. Oh yeah. Let's go. Gotta go. Gotta go. Sam's way. Sam's way. A little bit more. A little bit more right there. Close your thumbs. Stay. Get this straight. Come around right here. Close your hands. Go! Oh, oh wow. Jeff Hale! Wow! Jeff, the Hail Razor Hail. Raising Hail there. Wow. That was fast. <laughs> and I don't know if Sam slept on the start or what, but. Let's watch this replay here, Ben. I think Jeff just timed the hit perfect. Turn Sam in, exposing him on his bicep. And that's Hale's power, I told you, inside hook. Yeah. Sam couldn't do nothing from there, wow. That's, that's a big statement from Jeff Hale to start the match like that. And Hale, you'll see his reaction, and you know it annoys him that he is not the champion. Well, that just threw a lot of fuel on Hale's yeah. fire. You're, you're right about that. So 90 seconds between poles. Jeff Hale out to a 1-0 lead. So I, I stand corrected on his footwear. He's got a Vans shoe, the old shoes that Jeff Spicoli made famous in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, on his right foot, and a Reebok pump on his left. <laughs> I've never seen this before. <laughs> I asked him this morning. I said, the Vans coming back. He said, I got a little surprise for you, Ben. 1-0 oh, lead now. for him. All serious since we get back to it. Back up this way. Open up. And, and I'm already seeing an adjustment yeah. from Harris. He's, what is it? He's pulling, he's pulling back way harder. He's not coming up into Jeff's up. hand. Okay. He's pulling into Jeff's fingers. Uh, uh, uh. And he's looking to move straight back instead of any type okay. of pressure towards the center of the table or down. Okay. okay. Because he knows that's where Jeff is putting his pressure. And now Sam's got the strap, yep. which I'm favoring Sam in. Okay. I'm favoring Sam in the okay. strap. I think this is going to be a 1-1 match right here. And it has to be, or else Sam's in deep water. Sam needs this win right here, right now. Elbows, hey, put this down. Elbows down. Relax right here. Both control this. The strap being applied. First title defense for Sam Harris. Defeated Jeff Hale last year for the hammer. Hale said this morning, he said, Quite frankly, he said, I was off for two years yep. coming back. That's good. Some may call it an excuse. It's just the reality of the situation. But now he's been training consistently right. for the last year. Don't so it's him, him and Sam pulled. And don't raise Jeff told me he, he came just ready, relax, confident, and strong. And he just proved it in that first round. He That's really good. did. Doing in lightning quick, quick fashion. Square up. Elbow but down, Sam down. is very He's technical, especially in the strap. Elbow down. 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 Elbow
I can feel I'm, I'm feeling right here. I don't feel pressure in my hand. Jeff's complaining for a rising pressure when he's getting I'm holding. St. Sam's rising too hard in his hand. Yeah. He is. Close your thumbs. Better come Jeff's way. Yep. Jeff's way. Jeff, I'm trying to pull to your side. Sam looking Close your hand. Go. Jeff cups him in. Wow. Look at this angle. Jeff's established the hook. Can he finish? Jeff Sargis. Wow. Where? He's got him. Wow. Unbelievable. Two nothing lead for the Hill Razor. Jeff Hill on the defending champ here in the lightweight division, Sam Harris. That, I'm honestly speechless. Jeff Hale is impressive. Because Sam had a great you, setup there, pulled right into his hand. Year. I ain't messing around. He's made that clear so far. He said, yeah, I ain't messing around. Wow. Just it. wish he was more uh, honest. He do anything <laughs> this, is an, this is unexpected. It really is. Yeah. Look, I mean, the positioning is Jeff Hale's just cupping him inside and bringing him in the hook with just brute strength. Yep. You know, this isn't this isn't fancy technique, Ben. This is brute power. And Hale's bringing it. Yep. Wow, Sam, Sam can't believe it. Yeah, I think everybody's I think stunned. That match. Separation between the wrists, height over my thumb and the meat of my hand. I gave him everything he wanted that match, and he still couldn't beat me. Wow. What happens if I get what I want? Come on, let's go. <laughs> oh, he is a very deep intellectual <laughs> man. In. And let's listen hey, to Sam Harris' corner. In. You got to make sure he don't come in. Yeah, he got way too. Yeah. He had an angle he was, on. He was already cut in before the go. Come on, get your shit together. If I can't get that set up, I gotta go for a hook. I got. I'm not gonna make that same mistake again. I can hook with him. He's just getting me way out. Right. He's got you out of control. You gotta change though. Yeah. You're making adjustments. Listen. You, you cannot know, you do know the what same you thing. Do. All right. Just make sure. Well, so what do you think? What I believe Sam was saying is. He can't go for the same outside move and expose and stretch out his arm. He's either got to commit in the hook straight from the start right. or be able to blast open Jeff's hand, which he hasn't been able to no, do. So he's saying close. he can't make that same mistake. Right. He hasn't been close at that. Yeah. So I warn you, though, it just may be the noose around your neck. Jeff Hale, with that said, can win this in a sweep. Go here, turn here, square. The defending champ, the reigning champ, Hold Sam up. Harris, Hold trying up. to stay alive here. Close your thumbs. Close them down. Strap time. 30 seconds to get a grip. I'm just saying, it's the same thing in the trap though. He's sucking I'll hold it and I'll feel it, I'll call it. I gave him everything he wanted last match. Everything. That's the mind games. Just yeah. saying I gave him everything, he couldn't beat me. Right, wow. right. That's that's grimy. Have just, you seen him this confident in years? He's yeah, I haven't seen him this confident in a long time. Yeah. Uh, He's breaking down the match in front of his opponent right. and telling him right. no matter what He's you do. He's trying to steal your job. <laughs> He's a character, that's he for is. sure. He's one of the biggest characters in this sport, Jeff, really Jeff is. the Hail Razor. He really is. Sorry, I can hold the strap now with my thumb. Yeah, you can do that. Sam yeah. Harris trying to stay alive here, down 2 nothing. You can't rise. The Jeff Hale. Right, I got this way. Yep. You said it. Others said it. Yeah. This yeah. could very well be the match of the night. It might end up being the biggest surprise of the night. I asked Hale, do you feel like the underdog? He said, no, I don't. No. Wait, wait, wait. He really, no, even that's 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 it did. Yeah. He was that he confident. Yeah. He didn't even he feel was. like the underdog. Yeah, he was this morning. He thought yeah. he was the champ coming to repla uh, reclaim his throw. Yeah. He can take the hammer if he wins Close this pull on top okay, two nothing. Is this is Jeff Hale. It's not distance. I can close my thumb. You guys I don't want to bro. Yo, you're not even. Open up. Open up. Come down, Tim. Tim, Tim, you gotta come down. Sam really needs something here. We need to straighten up. I will. Way. Square. Square. Close your thumbs. Close your thumbs. To the distance. One foul. So he calls the foul against Bart Wood on Sam Harris. His first foul. Down. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Square. Close your thumbs. Close your hands. Go. Oh, Sam with a better position. Sam with a much better position. He needs to be smart here. He needs to be really smart from right here. Ben, 
He's got position. He needs to be very smart. He's got Jeff's hand's hand, but it's not peeled back. But he can adjust. He knows it. You see his head nod. He knows he can adjust from here, and he yeah. knows he's in control. He needs to be extremely smart and bleed Jeff out. And, and he's, he's doing the call. He's doing exactly that. Look at him. He knows that. And Jeff Hale nods to him. He knows that. Yeah. That was Sam Harris's round. Yep. Yeah. Two rounds. He's back in it now. Wow. What a match. And this is brewing to be one of the best matches of all time if Sam Harris can come back into it and force a fifth round. Wow. This is going to be amazing. He is the champ. Won it last year, defeating Hale. And they go to their corners for 90 as we look back here, Max. Well, Sam made the hit. He just hit to his position, and once he established it, then he knew, okay, I got this. I can feel the control. I can feel the pressure in his, in his hand was what he wanted. He didn't let Jeff dictate the match. So in the corner of Sam Harris, let's listen in. Let me rest my arm right there. You guys are old enough to be going to school. Here's where you can get in trouble. If you try to press straight over the top of him, I don't want that right now. This is what we want. We want your pressure on the back of the wrist here. Drop down, because you were perfect right there. And that took a lot more out of him than you. You on another level. That, that Paul Lynn there, he is a winner tonight. Jeff Hale with... One Vans shoe on and a Reebok pump on the other foot. Pretty quiet in his corner right now. There's a lot of tension here. Yeah. Because Big Hale time. was in control. All his control. confidence was building. He thought it was over. Yep. And all of a sudden, boom, now it's a completely different momentum shift right into Sam's corner because now Sam knows exactly where to go with this match. Yep. So Jeff Hale was on top 2 nothing. now 2-1. He can win this. If he's able to win the fourth pull, can he put away the champion? Over well, the champ. Yeah, flex this his muscles. What, yeah, this is what the crowd wanted. Yep. A really tense, high energy, high pressure matchup. Let's see who's got this. No side pressure, open your hands. Harris looks calm and he does. Jeff a little, a little more jittery, a little more anxious now. Yep. You know, in, in the short time that I've seen Sam over the last couple of years, he always seems to look that way. He's he very is. composed. Yeah, he really he's is. He's a composed type of competitor. Yeah, he is. So the strap being applied. Mm, wow, this match is brewing <laughs> into an absolute classic. Them. It's what you hope for when um, you come to do these, right? Really equal. hoping for a fifth round here. Yep. No back pressure, no movement. We haven't had down. one yet. Okay, just leave it up. That's you. Paul Lynn, a 3-1 win. Yeah. Angie Rose, a 3-1 win. And Jerry Cataretti, clean okay, sweep, a 3-0 win. Hold on. Yeah, have a sloppy in his match against Ryan Espy. Down. And this was the match I Sam thought have to push hard. would go I, 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 the spin to the five round. You know. You're fine, you're fine. Just don't wear them too hard on my hand. I'm not going up. Well, yeah, you are. But you are, bro. I shouldn't have to push down to get to his body. Okay, that's tight enough. I don't want to tie. Our hands are already blowing up. Separate your up. Square up. This is huge. I got you. He's on the line. The hammer's on the line. So intense. The reputation's on the line. Everyone's watching at home. Around the world. Around the world. Here we go. Right there, gentlemen. One foul. Paul on Hale for the elbow. Settle down, settle in. You heard Bart Wood said settle down. Hale's complaining, his arms getting lifted up. Yeah. Hale using a veteran technique to adjust his own strap. Don't try that at home, kids. <laughs> Here we go. Sit your elbows down, and I'll start. Sam Harris has to win to top. stay alive. In this best of five. Close your hands. Go. No. Oh my God, Sam Harris. Look at him smiling. Look at Sam Harris. Put your hand on the pin. Working him. Working him. Popping down on his arm. Puts the foot up on the table. Jeff doesn't think he's out of this matchup, but Sam wins. Sam Harris. Wow. We're two going to two. the fifth round. Yes. I just watched Jeff Hale. He looked up and he said, unbelievable. Looked up at the sky. I can't believe this either. 
the way it went is just so unexpected. I could see a back and forth, yeah. but it was two dominating rounds by yes. Harris. Yes. Two dominating rounds by Harris. Yes. Who's going to get the fifth? Let's take a look back at the fourth pull that goes to Sam Harris. Well, he knew he had him. Same spot. Out in Jeff's hand, pulled away from his body, elbow to the back of the pad, right in Sam's power. He knew it was his. Look at Sam's reaction. Oh, yeah. Relishing in that win. Hale on and the other all side. All the momentum's on Sam's yeah. side. All the momentum. Hale wondering how it got away. Let's listen into Sam Harris's corner. As long as you keep your wrist back like that, he can't, no way can he get what he wants. Not possible. And I like how you bled him a little bit. Just let him pull like that. You've taken a lot more out of him than what you have the last two matches. All right, so let's go over to Jeff Hale's corner. He's got Ian Carnegie over there helping him off. I can't get myself to stop coming towards him because he's pulling me. If he would stop pulling me across the table, I wouldn't react to it. I can't stop reacting to it. Well, Jeff's a veteran. He, he's saying that Sam's giving him pressure, and he, he can't help but start to react to it, and he's getting pulled across the table over and over again, yeah. so he can't establish the, the starting position that he wants. All right, so Sam Harris back to the table. He's got all the men of all the mojo right now. Jeff Hale went 2 nothing. Harris has survived and won the last two. Let me set this up, Ben. Hammer on the line, money on the line. Yes. Round five, winner takes all. Doesn't get any better than that. This is what the World Arm Wrestling League is all about. Wow, look at that beauty. Who's taking it home, Ben? We're going to see right now who's taking the hammer home. Who's the lightweight champ? Look at the time of my thumb knuckle. Man. Close your thumbs right there. Give me a fair match. I bust your ass all day. Strap will come out. 30 seconds have expired. Rising up the setup. Hale, to me, is, is he's out of his element. Well, Let's Hale go. screamed, if you give me a fair yeah. setup, I'll bust them all day. Yeah, well. Sam Harris, I don't think his face has moved since he had the celebration. It's been the same expression, that calm composure that we talked about a couple of minutes ago. He's very composed, which is the opposite of Hale style. Right. 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 loud, aggressive, and he's trying to just keep pushing. Stop touching my hand. Don't touch my hand. Just about a block. Tight, way tight, but I don't want it quite that tight. You need that back Look from overhead. Crowd, everyone on their feet in here. This is tense. You gotta come I down, Sam. Right there. I, I, I know Sam has the momentum, but this is one anyone's foul. match, man. Five. One and one. One, one foul each. Yeah. Let's go. Come on, man. Winner takes it, winner gets the hammer. In this best of five, tied at 2 2. Hale wants a tighter, he wants a strap tighter, he wants to hold. You're about to hit. Hold on to Sam right here. Two fouls on Hale right now. But this is a pressure cooker right now, Ben. I'm holding him. You don't want to see it end this way. You know, I the crowd so much. I can't feel pressure right there. Come on, Jeff. He's revved up. He's really revved up. Close your thumbs. Stay right there, stay down. Close your hands, go! Sam Harris. Wow, but Hales, Hales bound a little something. But Hales bound a little something. But Sam's in control. Sam's got to be careful, though. Jeb Hale can't believe it. He's still at the table protesting, talking to Bart Wood. Yep. To no avail. Wow. Let's take a look back at this fifth ball. Bart Wood called that third foul. 
And the match goes the way of Sam Harris, who's standing by with Jason's own Fisher. Jason. Sam, wow, what a match. You went down 2 nothing. Were you worried at any point there? Absolutely. Shocked me. Shocked me. Um, I just guess I couldn't wake up. Took me two matches. I shouldn't have been sleeping that bad. Hats off to Jeff. Man, that was a battle. That was a battle, and I second that. Jeff Hale is an incredible competitor. You guys have quite a rivalry going right now. I have a feeling this isn't the last time that you'll face him. What is it like to face off against someone like Jeff Hale? He, he does a lot of talking, and, and he often backs it up. Absolutely, and like we said before, he's so smart, so good on the table. You beat him once, don't think it's over. He's coming with another game plan. He showed it tonight. Now, last season, you were hungry, trying to claim the hammer. This is a totally different position when you are defending the crown. What is that like? Is it a different mindset and mentality when everyone is gunning for you? Yeah, going down two matches right in the beginning with the hammer almost taken away from you and getting to fight it back. Man, hey, I, I'm so thankful right now. It, that was hard. <laughs> yeah. It was definitely not easy. The momentum shift clearly in the third round. What was your mindset going into that round down 0-2? Yeah, um, confidence each match, each win, more confidence. I felt his hand weakening up. I felt like, you know, I was in the match more and more. By that third match, I was real confident my hand was stronger than his. How you feeling right now? You seem pretty tired. You seem exhausted. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna go home and chill. <laughs> Well, before you go chill, it's time to celebrate because you get to continue to wear the crown. Let's get your hammer back. Give it up, everyone, for the lightweight champion, Sam Harris. Congratulations, Sam. He's still the champ, Ben. Yeah, no doubt. He's got a left hand full of cash and a hammer in the other one. Celebrating, showing it off. And let's go over to our table about 10 feet to my right. My broadcast partner, Max Tomlin, over there to show us and take us back through the winning pin. I'm here with my buddy CJ Twine to break down the match. What an epic round. What you saw is Sam hold back, take Jeff, and put all the pressure into his fingers. From this point, it was very hard for Jeff to put his power into Sam's arm because Sam has the leverage and the angle to be on top of his hand with Jeff stretched out. And guess what he did from there? Straight side for the pin and keeping his hammer. Big win by Sam Harris. Huge win for Harris down two nothing and he comes back to win it in five, defeating Jeff Hale his second straight year as a lightweight champ and the hammer holder here in the WAL. Todd Hutchings and Matt Mass coming up in our main event number two of the night right after this. And we welcome you back here to Ramshead Live here in Baltimore, Maryland. We are inching closer to our fifth match of the night between Matt Mask and Todd Hutchings. But first, let's get down to Jason Zone Fisher. Thanks, Ben. I'm here with Dave Morocco. Dave, you are a legend in the Baltimore area when it comes to arm wrestling. How long have you been arm wrestling, uh, spe specifically here in the Baltimore, D.C. area? Well, I started pulling in 1987, so I've been pulling for 32 years. Amazing. Now, for those who don't know, people out there, they want an opportunity to participate in arm wrestling. They're going to have the chance with the new Buffalo Wild Wings WAL Qualifier Series. Can you talk a little bit about that and what it means while well, they're going to get a shot too? Yeah, that's really exciting for new kids coming in and wanting to learn how to arm wrestle. And we actually, I do have practices at my house in uh, about 20 minutes from here. So we pull every Thursday night at 7.30. So I everyone is welcome anyone wants to learn how to arm wrestle i'm more than game to show them what i know and to get them in the game of arm wrestling so they can compete that's great you want to give out your cell phone and address no i'm just kidding i'm kidding <laughs> they can find you and people in this community definitely know who you are arm wrestling is a community and for those of you out there who say hey i could do this too well now you have an opportunity check out walunderground.com because more info will be posted soon giving you a chance to qualify for a chance to compete on the big stage at the championship in Atlanta. It's pretty exciting. Yes, it is. Well, 
You young kids, arm wrestling is alive and well. That's right. We are proving it here tonight, and we've got one match left. I cannot wait for it. It's going to be a good one. Ben, Max, back to you guys. All right, Jason, thanks so much. And I want to welcome Buffalo Wild Wings, our official sports bar of the World Arm Wrestling League. Buffalo Wild Wings will also be the exclusive host of the WAL Qualifier Series. Look for details. Yeah. Soon and you saw that Ben. I did see that. That was my course. two favorite things pretty women and arm wrestling <laughs> There you go. Max Tom <laughs> and Ben Holden Jason's own Fisher with us all of our great crew We appreciate all they do to make all this possible one left there Tobin and it might be the best one because this is a very Hyped up intense, you know contrasting styles oh, yeah. matchup. These guys have never pulled they're two of the most Exciting, intense guys. Yes. So I'm very interested to see what happens in this one. Todd Hutchings, of course, went against Devin Larratt in WAL 501. And Matt Mask, he is ready to rock and roll and get a peek at uh, our tail of the tape momentarily. But I mean, this has just got drama, intensity, yeah. just yeah. oozing with all those things. And we'll take a look now at this tail of the tape, and you see. Todd Hutchings, just three losses. Matt Mask, over 30 wins in his career. Todd Hutchings didn't get going until he was 35 years old. That's when he first started. He stumbled upon this sport, was looking for an archery tournament. Now he's become one of the best to ever do it. Well, let me just mention this. Matt Mask and Todd Hutchings couldn't be physically different. Yep, one no question. leverage, height, freakish hand size. Todd Hutchings, just a regular guy with just abnormal strength. Mechanical engineer. And There's here's Mask. Mask. He's got the hit, he's got the intensity, and he's got the physical tools yep. to pin anybody in the world. Yep. This guy's dangerous at the table, and he gets lit every time he goes. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. He comes off full of intensity, and there's Todd Hutchings. Todd I mean, if you know arm wrestling, you've heard of Todd Hutchings. Yep. This, this guy's pinned John Verzink. Yep. This guy's pinned every guy in the world yep. under 220 pounds. Yep. And his pedigree is he's one of the best middleweights of all time. Mm -hmm. But guess where he stepped into? Going the big up. boy league. Going super up. Super heavyweights. Yeah. And these monsters are a whole different level. All right, so look at the two competitors here in our final match of the night. And the ratings, they shake out that way. The power goes the way of Todd Hutchings. The endurance does too, 9.8 for endurance. But look at Mask's hit, 9.4. And he wants quick wins. He does not want this match to stop because that's Todd's power and his wheelhouse. Exactly. We had a chance to catch up with Matt Mask earlier today. Here were his thoughts when we talked to him about this big match coming up here tonight. Physically injury-free, so that's a that's a great start. Uh, I'm hoping to end that way. Uh, mentally, I'm I'm there. Uh, a few things going on right now that's kind of distracting me, but I ain't gonna let that bother me today. Um, I feel I feel good. I feel feel real good. I'm nervous, nervous because I've never pulled Todd, so I don't know what to expect. But uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling confident. Without the nervousness, you don't get the excitement. So. That's there for Matt Mass. Let's see what Instagram says here, Max. Yeah, and of course, Mass is the overwhelming favorite. Height, leverage, size, you know, hand, hand strength. He's got every tool in his toolbox to be able to beat Todd Hutchings. The only problem is, is that Hutchings presents such a freakish amount of horsepower that it's going to take more than just all those attributes to beat him. We'll see what unfolds. Let's now get to our pin announcer. Ian Riccoboni for the introductions. Ian. It is now time for the second half of our double main event. This bout is a heavyweight contest contested. Best of five pulls. Introducing first, this four time WAL middleweight hammer winner with nearly 40 WAL wins in that class continues to make his mark in the heavyweight division. This inside puller from Lowell, Ohio, is one of the most accomplished and recognized pound for pound arm wrestlers in the world. Weighing in tonight at 249 pounds, he is Todd Tozilla And 
and his opponent. He is known as one of WAL's quickest, most intense, and lightning fast competitors. Standing at a towering six feet, six inches tall, this star enters tonight with over a decade of experience and a 31 and 13 WAL record. Weighing in tonight at 248 pounds, he is a native of Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. He is Matt Wildhorn Max. Intense out the gate, Ben. Yes. Look at that. Does that guy look like he's right here, Paul? I'm looking at the eyes of Todd Hunchings right now, and they cut right through you. Todd with the icy stare. Yep. Matt Mask with just the psycho look. And the cold, He's... hard cash coming out now. Oh, yeah. Now it's on. Now it's really on. It like, is. Who's going to take it home? Stack of hundos underneath these two. Oh, Mask is just out is. for blood. Pacing the end of the platform. Hutchings hops up, and Bart Wood calls him to the table. Okay, Fifth and up. final match here in WAL 502 here in Baltimore. Square up. We gotta go his way. We gotta go his way. Who, which way? Yeah, and I think go Todd's gonna him. learn from his match with Devin. Uh, uh, match right similar right style right and, yeah. and, 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 and just okay. similar leverage and size. Right there. I think Todd is going to make some adjustments here oh, early. Yep. Over here. I'm trying to pull you his well, you know what that first He's adjustment is? Kill. Going to, to the strap. Mm -hmm. He's got that 30 seconds. Let's just put it fucking on straight right now. Right to the strap. And Matt doesn't mind. You said no. put it on. Yep. Okay. No movement. Keep webbing equal. But this is where Matt's really going right to feel Todd's, Todd's horsepower. Right and if this match stops, okay, Ben, this time. building is going to go crazy. Let me, get, let me get it through there, then you put it where you Hutchings want. told us this morning he feels fine. It's been a month since that match with Devin Larratt. Come back through. In Pittsburgh. Let me get it. Okay. Told us also, he said, I, I don't want to suffer two losses in a row. I feel That's not part of his game. Right? I'm going to push down, Todd. Don't push on me, please. And they've never pulled each other, Ben. Correct. These guys have never pulled each other, there so. There we go, gentlemen. Okay. Straight from Brian Matt, this first match, this first match, this first match is pivotal. Nope. Let's see what happens right here. Come on, Ruben. Close your thumbs. Stay right here. No movement. Close your hands. One foul. Ooh. One foul, curling in. Todd went Why early. Why would I curl in? What you think? Yeah, I'm going there because he's forcing me. Um, if Todd can close. lay down you think that I'm power go this onto round? Mask's on. bicep, mm -hmm. Matt's in trouble. Square up, gentlemen. Square up, Matt. One foul on Close Matt your thumbs. Okay, right. What is, right there, get this up. I'm holding you. Where, I know what angle does this match end up? That's my right question. There. We're going to see it right here. Yep. Go! Oh my goodness! John Hutchings! Oh my goodness! Takes it in the first ball. Todd Zilla. He knew what he had to do. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a second. Bart Wood called a running foul one one. on Todd. He did. Wow. One foul each. One foul each, right, guys. One piece, yep. Still your zero, zero, zero. So hold the phone, win. yes. Still goose eggs on the board. Go. Oh, now with the quick oh. hand. Dan Coley. No pain. Oh. No pain. 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 No Goodness! Matt thought he had the pin in the first hit. He I did. See this replay yes, right now. We man. will. Hutchings comes back with that power and takes him down and takes a one nothing lead. Let's see this right here, Ben. Let's take a look. Ooh. That was just after the first hit. Yes. And we're back a little bit more. Here we go. Table Here's cam. the table cam of Tosh just brutally pulling sideways. Oh. In the corner of Todd Hutchings. He's got Paul Talbot over there with him. Matt's got to forget about it now. Yeah. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe that was a pin, maybe that wasn't. Doesn't matter. He's got to forget about it and get right back in the zone. Let's listen to him. What's that? Sam 
Harris in there. Just won the 2019 lightweight hammer. Defeating Jeff Hale three to two in comeback fashion. Back over to Todd Hutchings. Not much shatter going on there at the moment. Wow. Wife Allison there behind him next to yeah, Paul His wife Allison is there for support, but yep. you don't need to support the man that just brutally <laughs> showed so much power. Yes. It's un you can't even measure the amount of power it takes to just stop Matt Mask's hit. Unbelievable from Todd Hutchings. At the start. I'm going to go looser. A little looser, I can get him over quicker. What's he mean by that? He wants yeah. to grip looser. Okay. He doesn't want to grip so tight on Todd's hand that he can't have any movement in the strap. So he's gonna he's gonna set up a little looser and then hit into his hand, exposing more of, of Todd's fingers and able to get in a better position. The key for Matt is the hit. He's got to he, he's got to dial down, it in right down, here. He needs this hit. Flat this out. You gotta go this way. This way. Right One nothing lead for Todd Hutchings. Best of five. Close your thumbs. Close your hands. One foul. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> we didn't even get Todd the hands down yet. <laughs> <laughs> I strap. think Todd felt like his, his hand and wrist almost got pulled out of his socket. <laughs> That's how much up pressure Matt has. Okay. Equal webbing. Speaking of which, Matt told us this morning that for three months, his elbow was out of, out of joint, out of socket. Said it wasn't feeling right. He goes to the doctor around December. Doctor yeah. says, hey, let me help you out here. Pop, pops it back in. Yeah. 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 This, this, this guy had a, more okay. injuries than I've ever well, seen last season. Was yeah. Yeah. Was able to come back. Very impressive. Dislocated fingers. The elbow. Okay, gentlemen, stay right here in the middle. We are in the middle. Square up. Second pull. Hutchings leads Close it one thumbs. nothing. Very important for Mask here. Close your hands. Foul. Full start. Foul one one. Matt Mask. Matt knows he needs to go early, but it's all about the angle. Now go it's all way, just that about hair right the there. angle. Close your thumbs. Close your hands. Hutchings. Wow. A little bit better for Mask. A little bit better there. He's higher into Todd's hand. Absurd oh. strength. That is a human-like strength to just have Matt Mass take your hand with all that up pressure and back pressure and pull through it straight to the side. Unhuman. So Todd Hutchings, prior to this match, quoted as saying, "If I were design the perfect to design the perfect arm wrestler to beat me, it would look like Matt Mask." And right now, that all means nothing because he is rolling through him so far. Well, Matt took his hand and got position, but. <laughs> Oh my God, that's unbelievable. Wow. Unbelievable elbow and just shoulder, just side pressure and tendon strength from Todd Hutchings. Oh, what a look. Great camera work. I know he's a mechanical engineer, but it looks like his arm might have some mechanics in it. <laughs> like I don't a know how, arm. Arm. I don't know how I put it... that kind of pressure down. No, I feel good. Arm feels good. His arm's got to feel good if oh, he yeah. just did that to Matt Mass. Oh yeah, for sure. 2 nothing lead. Yes, he can he win this thing, and now let's go to Matt Mask. Pressure, right? yeah. I go to drive into that this press. Is, I'm going to give it to him. What about straight for back mask. and then press? Open him up and then jump to, into the press. Yeah, I'm going to have to set up higher with him. I can't low hand him. Don't then. Top row. Oh, fuck it. Well, some are partial. Well, what they're saying is don't I'm low hand him, meaning don't put the pressure in the lower fingers. The they're saying you got to use your leverage and post, meaning and put the pressure in the upper line. fingers and get way above his arm, then make your move. Right. You know, similar to what we saw earlier with, like, Angie Rose, for example, yeah. posting higher, then making the move to the side once you establish the position. Right. So the two combatants back to the table here. Todd Hutchings there can win this in a clean sweep. Seems like I've said that before tonight. But what's crazy here is Mask has the tools to come back and win this match if he gets his move right. Correct. One inch off, it's over. Yep. Close it's over. Come down, Todd. Jeff Hale had a 2 nothing lead against Sam Harris in the last match, and Harris won 3 in a row. Strap time. You see this? He's way over my thumb. Keep sucking that thumb out. Go in this 
Because even though your thumb go, it's popping because you're pulling it back. Okay. Like. Todd's experience is showing here, Ben. Oh, yeah, big time. He knows what to do to win. He knows how to beat Mask. And he's, he's really found out that once he stops Mask, he can pin him. And that's his key right here. Yep. Mask isn't able to make an adjustment like, you know, Devin Lara did uh, to find another angle. This He's staying with the same angle, and, and Todd's found out exactly how to stop this, that angle. I don't angle. know what your fair strap's doing, but this is, see this? This ain't tight. Yeah. Todd's a sicko. I mean, can't talk enough about this guy. He's so impressive power-wise. Like, forget right technique. To be that strong is just Square unbelievable. Up. Yeah, it really is. Now, strap applied. Todd Hutchings going for the win. Mass is higher. He's higher. He, just, he looks a little bit adjusted. He's higher with the thumb in the hand. He's got a post hard here. He's got a post. He, no. That's a tall start, but he had a better position, Ben. Okay. That's a better angle for Todd. He's got a post hard. He's got to hit. Up. He doesn't have to hit to the side or even back. He's got to hit. Up. Before anything happens. Got one foul. Foul on. You gotta go to the middle. Could match. Oh, no, 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 no. Like no, no, no. Yeah, no, no, no. It's possible. Just it's not time. Right. Yeah. He just needs the angle right. Reset it, please. He's can't gotta touch do it here, though. Right. It's not, oh, it's do or die yeah, here. Touch yep. it on your hand. One more touch win in the touchings. Hand. Yep. We're gonna reapply the strap. Okay. Webbing equal. Do not move. Don't move at all. I would not want to be a referee in this sport. It is, a, it is a job that you got to have really thick skin to do. Yeah, it's a thankless job. Yep. The only guy but thinking I'm, is the guy that wants you. The guy hates your guts. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, so I'm just trying to be cheated in the worst. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, oh, the easy on the fingers there. Okay, let's go Todd's way. Square up. All right, straps Square apart up. here, Max. Do or die. Uh, do or die for Max. Yep, right there, Simple close as that. Has to win. Closer hand. Hutchings Stop. going for the That's win. a better angle for Mass. That's a better angle, but he needs to stay up. He needs to stay up and climb. He's got to climb. Todd. Yeah. That's it. Oh, Todd. Got him. Bart Wood calls a pin. I know, wow. but it still hurts me. I, I stopped in the sense that I could Is it over? Is it a conclusive? You're all right. Matt concedes. I think it's Todd Hutchings 3-0. I was waiting for the official call. Todd Hutchings <laughs> comes back after wow. his match a month ago against Devin Larrett and wins the cash! And the Toddzilla wave. That's his signature move after yep. he wins. Just wildly flailing his arms like windmills. I love it. Signature Hutchings here. Toddzilla in the building. Dominating performance. Two sweeps tonight. Wow. Hug from Wife Allison. Yeah. Thanks to all those that were in his corner. Look how happy he is. And here's and a Matt look had back. had a better angle. He had a better angle there. But Todd Silla, that man is so damn strong. And the raise of the arms in the cash in hand. And let's get down to Jason Zone Fisher standing by with Matt Mask. Thanks, Ben. Matt, you're a confident guy, but when we talked to you earlier, you said you're actually a little nervous. This is your first time going up against Todd Hutchins. Walk us through what happened here tonight. Uh, and you go against anybody you've never pulled before, you don't realize where their pressure is. I was thinking his pressure was in a little different situation. And I ended up messing that up. I, even in the setup, I didn't quite feel right in taking nothing against Todd. Todd, Todd smashed me tonight, so. The setup, it felt like he was more on my side. Harder to get outside of that hand. I was able to take the wrist, but he's a side pressure king, so that's what he does. It seemed like you almost had him in that very first round. It was close to a pin. If you could have a do-over, is there anything you would do differently here tonight? Yeah, I'd like to watch the review on that one, double check, but I'm pretty sure that was close. Well, you're an incredible competitor. You leave it all out here, and I know that you'll be back soon. Thank you for your time tonight, and uh, everyone, a big round of applause for Matt Mask. Thanks, Matt. But let's keep it going for Todd Zilla. Todd. Hey, hey. Oh, no! Oh, no! Don't 
do it. Okay. Oh, no. All right, Todd. Oh, man. Thank you. You got to regain. Oh, I can. Yeah. Thanks. You a tip for that. That's good. It's even better. Todd, talk about Matt Mass going up against a competitor like that. He obviously has a huge length advantage over you. This is your first time now. You're in a new weight class. What was it like pulling against Matt Mass? Uh, he was as fast as I expected him to be, and his power was there. But I, I think I got him a little better on the grip and the setup. But he, he won life's lottery with the height, so <laughs> well, I got a fair strap grip. <laughs> pound for pound, I don't know if there's anyone stronger on the planet for you when it comes to arm wrestling. I mean, is well, there? The planet's a big place. There's a lot of people stronger than me. <laughs> now, you're in the heavyweight <laughs> division. Talk a little bit about how much work that ha you have put into this new weight class and the challenges that come with oh, that as well. Yeah, jumping weight classes is rough. The first four or five weeks is fun because you're eating Baconators and chocolate shakes, but then the next 10 pounds is just brutal. You know, I'd rather cut weight than gain weight any day. <laughs> well, we've now seen you two Super, two WAL events in a row. How was going up against Devin Larratt how did that prepare you tonight to take on that mask? It definitely told me I needed a, a top game, and there's not enough table there for me to pin big guys. So you got you to gotta stay on top. You can't just drag them out. Well, perhaps that helped you prepare and win here tonight. Congratulations, Todd Zilla. Go celebrate that win without picking me up. I appreciate it. Ben, Max, great night. I'm going to go uh, give his money back. All right. <laughs> Good move. Yeah, yeah. All right, Jason, thanks, and a great night. And you can catch all the World Arm Wrestling League action on BR Live. Download the BR Live app on your mobile device, Apple TV, Roku, or on your Amazon Fire TV. Max, a big one coming up in Richmond. The Ooh. main event there will be easy money against the monster. Dave Chafee against Michael Todd coming up on June 20th for 503. That's a juicy matchup. Two of the best super heavyweights in the world walking this planet Earth. And I uh, can't wait to see that one. Amazing card. Final thought from you on tonight and what we saw. Great action, great matchups. Uh, what else can I say? You know, lightweight hammer matchup lived up to the billing and the supers between Mask and Hutchings was intense. Good stuff. We'll do it again in a month. That's going to do it from WAL 502 here in Baltimore. We thank you for watching. We thank our executive producers, Warren Pick and Ed Gorn, our technical director, Peter Loomis, senior producer, Jay Cabrera, president and commissioner of the WAL, Steve Kaplan. We thank Ramshead Live in the city of Baltimore, Maryland. We'll see you next month on BR Live for WAL 503 from Richmond. For Max, Jason, all of our crew, Ben Holden saying thanks for watching and good night.